My name is Samuel Johnson, Reverend Samuel J. Johnson of the Jehovah Dyer Community Church. I would like to do a testimony of my life, things that I've been through, things how the church became to be a church, how a building that was made by man but God placed it in his bosom and it became a holy place to serve. <laughs> I was born in Omaha, Texas, Naples, Texas, 1945. Yes. During the time of my livelihood that my mother and my father had some disturbance because he didn't want me because I was not his God child. Things happen we have no control over when we're small. But soon as we get older, we can see the difference. I was given to my grandmother and grandfather when I was a year old. They brought me up in the church, serving God and doing what I could to help others do the same. Then, as I began to get older up in the age, I learned to know God for myself. Oh, good God, so glory. Knowing for myself, know what he will do if you ask. That's the saying said, ask not ask and it shall be given. Uh -huh. We have not because we ha ask not. Uh -huh. Then I came up Paul Peary High School. I finished with honors. <laughs> then I went off to Prairie View A&M College. And I didn't get a degree, but I found a job that was paying real good, so I didn't feel like I needed college then. I need somebody to, 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 to know what I'm saying, that have been through it like I have. And I don't need no college. I got me a good job. And I worked on this job about nine years. And one morning I went in and there was a sheet, a book up there, for about eight or 9,000 people's names on it for the layoff. I took the layoff. And I went to another place to work. But I didn't like the night shift. So I left there. Then sometimes it's a good thing to be around right people all the time. Oh, yes. Because if you get around people that are doing wrong, if you stay in the sand, sooner or later you're going to get dirty. And I got dirty. And I went to selling drugs, gambling, doing whatever I could to help take care of my family. Didn't know that whether I took care of my family or not, it was wrong in the sight of God. I was doing real good that I thought. But then one day, my time was up. The police came in. And I got in trouble. And I went to prison for a few years, but not as many as they wanted to give me. But when I was in prison, sisters and brothers, I learned about the word. Sometimes you have to be put to yourself yeah, to learn something about yourself and God. And I read the Bible day in and day out. And I came out. And I said, Lord, if you bring me out of this, you don't have to worry about it no more. And God blessed me, sisters and brothers, to make it through. And when I did get out, I went to working more for the Lord. 
He's so good, y'all. I want you to know that he can do anything but fail. But but one day, after I spent my time serving God, there was an old church building down in Naples, Texas. And a friend of my wife asked us to come and fellowship with him. Uh -huh. Say, this is a church that take away the, help you take away the evil spirit through Jesus. Testify. And I went there. 15, 16 years ago. And when I came out from there, when I stepped out of that building that night, the day looked like day. Night, wasn't no light, wasn't no darkness. It was daylight that night. And when I come out, looked like I could see Jesus. And this is the truth, sisters and brothers. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could see him. And, and, and that night, I picked up that cross that I'm carrying now. And I've been carrying that cross for a lot of years and a lot of years. I never look back. I let the dead be dead. I never look back on my life because God has forgiven me for all of my sins. A lot of wrong that I did, but God forgave me. A lot of right that I did. But sisters and brothers, through all of this, I got peace now. God blessed us with a building a band hall at the school that was sitting next to our home. And a lady in our family sold us that building. And we took that building and started having church in one room. Hallelujah. Sister Johnson, can you remember when we had a Bible study in that one room? Yeah. Then one day God said, we got to move this. He said, I want this to be a church. And when he said that, my wife had made this into a house. And she had the same thing over there at that building that we had at home. But God said, it's time to knock walls down. Yeah, we ought to always have to have a little comedy. In, in, in our talk. And my wife say, well, God didn't tell me that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell my house up. He said, knock the walls down. But being a faithful servant of God, we start knocking walls down. Oh, hallelujah. I can remember. Hallelujah. I can remember. We, 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 we took furniture out of there and we sold it. We took things, other things that we gave away. And we knocked down all the walls. Then financially we didn't have no money to do no building. But God touched. Oh, and he will. Well, I said that to my city, to my side. Yes, to my city. Touch people. Give us lumber. Donate money. Until we got the building looking fairly like a church. But we didn't have no game room like the big church had. We didn't have no gift shop. We didn't have no place to eat. We didn't have no place for the business to sit. We just had a small church. But then we just kept praying. Sisters and brothers, I want you all to know that there is answer. Excuse me. God is answering prayer every day. If you pray, just keep asking. One day, a fellow told us, you see, I've got a house that I don't want. If you get somebody to tear it down, you can get the lump out of it. Another fellow come by and said, if you need any help, 
He said, I'm a master builder. I'll help you. Black peoples, white peoples all around started to work it. We had a gift shop now in our church where the proceeds goes to the church. We have a dining area that probably sits about 40 people now. The church has been adding on to it now. When we used to get maybe 15 or 20 people in a building, God has blessed the building that we can hold over 100 now. We didn't do it by ourselves. We did it through Jesus. I picked up that cross, as I told you, 15 or 16 years ago. I never looked back. I just kept, like Noah did when he was building the ark. And somebody said, it's going to rain. Noah started preaching that. For him to get ready, come to the ship, come help me. Because it's going to rain. And he preached that for years and years and years. And that's what we did at Jehovah Jireh Community Church. God has been good to me. God has brought me through diabetes, cirrhosis of the liver. He has brought me through dialysis treatment. He has brought my wife through cancer, having to do with heartaches and headaches, pains that some men and women cannot bear. But when you get your hands in God's hand, when you get grounded and rooted in the Word, nothing will change things. And we have picked up, and we've been traveling. We've been going, and we made a promise to the Lord. If anything, he wants to do, we'll do it. Sometime at church, it don't be nobody there but me and my wife. But we keep it going because we're serving a God that can do anything but fail. We never had a big congregation. We never had a lot of tide pails to help with the church. It's the grace of God. Hallelujah. Help this building to come. We have no mortgage on our building. We don't call it, we call it God's home. It's His. We have everything that God put in there for us. If it's not in there, God don't want it in there. And we have been traveling this road. And we're traveling this road right now. We will, long as we will, long as we live, long as we can reach out and touch something or somebody, tell them the same, that God is for real. God is coming back. I've lived a world alive, but now I'm looking for my crown. I'm looking for my crown. I know I got a star that's waiting for me somewhere in glory. Where there is the gate called beautiful, where the floor is in gold and the purity of me coming to the kingdom. I don't thank man because man don't have no heaven. Man don't have no hell. But the God that I'm serving. Well, so yes, I'm going to tell you so much. See, God, not yes, so much say the God that I'm serving. Oh, Lord, y'all, help me now. He can do anything but fail. I've come a long way, but I didn't come by myself. I come with my hands in God's hand. Telling the world, let dying men and dying women know that there is a God somewhere. And while we're talking, this is how the church goes on. People's contributing to the Jehovah Jireh Community Church. 
if you hear this way off and you feel church and you want to send something to the Jehovah Jireh church to help it keep going and going. We are here. Omaha, Texas. P.O. Box 1034. Omaha, Texas. Area code 903-75571. Father, we just want somebody to hear this and be a blessing to Jehovah Jireh. And let that blessing that you bless Jehovah Jireh with help you receive a blessing in the future. I love God. Hallelujah. I love serving Him. And the building, not made by man, its labor was done by man. But the Spirit on the inside, it fills my heart with joy to know that I've done all I can. And I know one day I'm going to have to go home. But I pray every day that my slate will be clean. When God come back, I can hear his voice saying, Welcome home. Welcome home. A true and faithful servant. You have been blessed down here with a few things. But come on up. I want to make you rule over many. This is my testimony of my life. And I pray that something in my testimony might help you as you travel up and down these highways of life. Right now, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this time. Hallelujah. <laughs>